Picture this. You're at the gym, pumped up and ready to lift some heavy weights. You spot the perfect set of dumbbells, but alas, someone is using them as a coffee table while they chat on their phone. Sound familiar? Now, let's get one thing straight. The weights at your gym aren't there to hold up your protein shake, your towel, or your latest tech gadget. They're there to be used, to be lifted, to be the very thing that helps you and others sculpt those dream bodies. Yet, some folks seem to think of them as a personal furniture item, especially during peak hours. Imagine, if you will, that these weights are like the most eligible singles at a party. They're popular, they're in demand, and everyone wants a piece of their time. Now, how would you feel if someone monopolized their attention, using them as an armrest while they chat away, oblivious to the line of interested suitors waiting for their chance? Well, that's essentially what's happening when you use the gym equipment as a personal lounge. It's not a good look, is it? Not to mention, it's a bit rude to the other gym goers who are trying to squeeze in their workouts. Now, I'm not saying you should rush your workout or feel pressured to speed through your sets. Not at all. What I am saying though is, be mindful. Be aware, if you see someone eyeing your weights or subtly trying to catch your attention, it might be time to wrap up your rest period and let someone else have a turn. So next time you're at the gym, remember this. The weights aren't going anywhere. They're not going to run out of the door or suddenly disappear. They're there for everyone to use, so use them, enjoy them, but don't hog them. Remember folks, weights need love too. Don't keep them waiting while you scroll through your Instagram feed. Ever felt like you're in a packed subway during rush hour while at the gym? Yeah, personal space seems to evaporate faster than your motivation on leg day. Now let's talk about this invisible personal bubble. We all have one. It's that comfortable zone around us that we prefer others not to invade unless invited. In the gym, this bubble seems to be, well, somewhat flexible, but it shouldn't be. Remember, the gym is not a sardine can, and we are not sardines. Imagine you're in the middle of a set, lifting weights like a champ, and suddenly, someone sidles up uncomfortably close. Their sweat is practically a misty aura around them. You can't help but feel like you're in the splash zone at a water park, and not in a fun way. Or maybe you're on the treadmill, in the zone with your favorite tunes, when someone hops on the machine right next to you. Never mind the fact that there are 10 other empty treadmills. Suddenly, your solo run feels like a race you didn't sign up for. Then there's the person who thinks your yoga mat space is communal property. They step over, around, and sometimes even on your mat. It's like playing a game of Twister you didn't agree to. These scenarios are not only uncomfortable, but can also be distracting and even unsafe. So what's the solution? Respect the bubble, folks. If someone's using a machine you want to use, wait your turn or find another one. If the gym's crowded, remember, it's not a game of human Tetris. There's no need to squeeze into the smallest space available. And for the love of all things gym-related, don't step on someone else's yoga mat. Respecting personal space at the gym is about more than comfort. It's about safety, focus, and creating a positive workout environment for everyone. So next time you're at the gym, remember, invading personal space only counts in board games, not in the weight room. The gym can sometimes feel like an audition for America's Got Talent. Grunts, groans, and the occasional off-key humming of a pop song. It's a symphony, really. A symphony of sounds that can stir emotions ranging from amusement to irritation, depending on the day, or the decibel level. Now, let's talk about the maestros of this symphony. The grunters. Grunters, we get it. That last rep is a Herculean feat, and sometimes you've just got to let out a sound that would make a silverback gorilla nod in approval. But remember, the gym isn't the wild, and we're not in a contest to see who can grunt the loudest. Then, we have the equipment clangers. These folks treat gym equipment like a drum set, making a cacophony of clanging and banging that could give any metal concert a run for its money. Here's a pro tip. If your weights are making more noise than you, it's probably a sign you need to ease up a bit. And who can forget about the off-key hummers? These are the brave souls who, despite their headphones, forget the world around them and treat us all to their unique renditions of the latest pop songs. While we appreciate the entertainment, we might not always share your taste in music or your unique vocal range. Look, 
We're not asking for library level silence here. We know that the gym is a place of action, of energy. It's a place where people push their limits, where they strive to be better, stronger, faster. A certain level of noise is not just expected, it's part of the package. But like any great symphony, it's all about balance. So, next time you're at the gym, remember, it's not just about the weights you lift or the miles you run. It's also about the sounds you make and the impact they have on others. So unless you're the next Mariah Carey or The Rock, let's keep the gym noise to a minimum. Your fellow gym goers will thank you. Ever used a gym machine only to find it still sweating from the last person? Yeah, not a pleasant surprise, is it? Picture this. You're about to conquer your personal best on the treadmill. You're hyped, you're pumped, the adrenaline is coursing through your veins and then, you hop on and instantly feel the cold, clammy sensation of someone else's sweat. Yuck, right? This isn't a scene from a horror movie. It's a reality in gyms across the globe. But it doesn't have to be. Enter the unsung hero of gym etiquette, the humble disinfectant wipe. You see, gym equipment is like a communal towel, shared by everyone but owned by no one. And just like you wouldn't want to use a stranger's damp towel, no one wants to touch your leftover sweat. Let's take a moment to appreciate the workout warriors, who after an intense session, take the time to grab a disinfectant wipe and erase their sweat memories from the equipment. They don't do it for the glory or the recognition, but because they understand it's the right thing to do. But then, there are those who leave a liquid autobiography of their workout on every piece of equipment they touch. The bench press that's now a waterbed, the dumbbells glistening with unwanted shine, the elliptical machine that's a slip and slide. Let's be clear. Your sweat is not a badge of honor for the next person to marvel at. It's not a testament of your hard work. It's just, well, gross. So here's a hot tip for you. The next time you finish your set, take a moment to wipe down the equipment. It's a small act, but one that speaks volumes about your respect for others. Plus, it's just good hygiene. After all, cleanliness isn't just next to godliness. In the gym, it's a close second to gymliness. Remember, leaving your sweat behind is not marking territory. It's just gross. Wipe it down, folks. Ever felt like you've mistakenly walked into a fashion show instead of the gym? Yeah, neon spandex can be quite blinding. Now don't get us wrong, we're all for expressing personal style and we love a good pair of stylish leggings or a snazzy sweat-wicking shirt. But sometimes it feels like the gym has turned into a runway for the latest workout gear. It's like we're in the middle of a fitness fashion week, and the dress code is, the brighter, the better. We've all seen them, those gym goers who look like they've just stepped out of a sports apparel catalogue, head to toe in the latest gear, colour coordinated outfits, and shoes that look like they've never seen a speck of dirt. They strut around, their outfits screaming for attention, and you can't help but wonder if they're there to work out, or to show off their fashion sense. Now, we're not saying you should hit the gym in your old raggedy clothes. Wearing appropriate gym attire is important. It should be comfortable, breathable, and suitable for the type of workout you're doing. But remember, the gym isn't a fashion parade. Your focus should be on your workout, not your wardrobe. Over-the-top gym fashion choices can sometimes be more distracting than motivational. Imagine trying to concentrate on your deadlifts while being blinded by the neon glare of someone's spandex ensemble. Or trying to keep your balance in yoga class while being distracted by a sea of flashy prints and patterns. The truth is, no one's going to be impressed by your designer gym wear or your color-coordinated outfits. What they will respect, however, is your dedication, your hard work, and your determination to reach your fitness goals. So by all means, wear what makes you feel good, but remember the real reason you're there. So, while we appreciate your fashion-forward approach, let's save the catwalk for Milan and keep the gym for working out.